Holy smokes, where do we even start with our round 10 team list? This has been an absolute crazy one. I think this is the worst of the season, especially if you are holding a bunch of these players that have been dropped. So uh, let's get into it. And it starts with our absolute shocker. Madge, what the hell are you doing? I don't even understand. Adam Dewey to the centers. He's been your best player by far. Not just that I, not that I just brought him in. Other than Dane Laurie having a decent season so far. Who else can you name in this team that's absolutely going well? Other than him, Lucy, Dane Laurie. That's probably it. He gets moved to the centers for Moses Embai in the sixth position. So that's great. That'll be really be a winning formula. Jacob Little comes back into the number nine jersey and Simpkin gets dropped after it. Look, a fairly average game. And I don't think he's actually been that great. He did score a try, which is good. But other than that, a couple of errors out of dummy half, just passing stupid forward passes and stuff like that. So... Um, you can understand, I think Little had a hat-trick the week before in New South Wales Cup, so that's why he's been brought back into side, and I don't think he was that bad at all when, when he got dropped in the first place, so they're, they're really um, they're really picking the right players to, to drop out drop out of the side and, and move them around, and yeah, we lose Simkin and Stefano as well this week, so crazy, both in the 19 and the 20 jersey, and, and we do see Sean Bloor onto the interchange, which a lot of people will be excited about, but I'd be, I'd be worried, well not worried, but I'd be thinking about him in, in terms of what his role is going to be. Is he going to play like 30 minutes? So if he's playing 30 minutes, I don't see him making too much money in the first week or two. So I'd definitely wait and see what happens with him. Just with the way the Madges are sorting out this team, you know, Stefano could come back at, at any time. You know, Sean Blore might not play that well. He could get injured. I wouldn't be thinking about actually starting him in your, in your starting team. So I'd be happy to wait uh, on his price point there. Um, but yeah, just, just crazy craziness with the... Um, with the Tigers, and, and if you got Brooks, I'd definitely be holding him because he's going to be getting a lot more kick meters and, and scoring a bit better, you would imagine, especially against the Knights team as well. So that's that. Absolutely crazy. On the Knights side, Ponga, decent game for him last week. Got the 60-odd, obviously started a bit slow, but you'd imagine a decent game against the Tigers. I'd, you know, I think a few people might even put the captaincy badge on him after his uh, you know, couple of lighter weeks, but into a good one. You'd imagine Kurt Mann and Phoenix Crossland should score pretty well this week. Crossland, I, I really like in terms of his scoring, but he's going to lose his spot in round 13 when we really need him. So he'll make some cash over the next few weeks, but that's about it on his front. Brabham Best keeps going down in price. I'd keep waiting until the Knights starting to start to play a bit better, or Brabham Best gets to a price point where he ends up turning into half of a cash cow that has potential to be to be a keeper um, because he is he really is a keeper. So. Um, that's that one there. We move down, and, and the same configuration that they started with the game with last week is what they have in the team list with Connor Watson in the 14 jersey. And you imagine him and Barnett would be splitting that role um, and with them name, naming the exact same team, really. Uh, Tex Hoy comes into the reserves, but I doubt that does too much for them. Oh, and, and the Tigers, Zach Sini gets dropped as well. So just exactly what you need for anyone that has Sini, Simkin, and Stefano playing in their side. So good stuff, Madge. Um, but again, yeah, unfortunately for him, he didn't have a very, very good game last week, and Tommy Talao comes back and takes that spot. So and that's that with the with the first game, and it actually gets worse. I don't know, actually, I don't know if it gets worse, but it stays. It doesn't stay too good. Uh, if you're on the Eagles side of things, you're, you're happy with everyone. You know, it's very very much the same side. Chaboyevich becomes closer to an option, but I'd be looking at him in round 14, for example. He's someone that always backs up. You know, he's kind of someone that that just does his job and, and tackles hard and, and whatever in the middle. So he's not someone that usually gets dropped. She'll say you can keep holding at this stage. Yeah, if, if he's not a keeper, then you trade him out in 13. But you keep playing him, especially with all these, uh, all these outs this week. Tommy Trevojevic, if you're playing head-to-head, -head, I think he's a definite buy. If you're playing overall, I think... Personally, I think you can wait. That 100 was out of this world, and they do play the Broncos this week. So <laughs> who knows what he could get this week, but... Um, Jason Saab's in there still doing a good job. I'd be be almost tempted to play him this week with, uh, we'll, we'll look a little bit lower, but there's someone that might not even be back that we thought would definitely be back. So, um, yeah, that's that one there. On the Broncos side, Asako's a hold. Farnworth and Arthurs have been scoring pretty well. Tyson Gamble could become an option this week, and, and he's still fairly cheap. And, you know, the question's going to be, is he going to continue playing? In terms of the their reserves, they haven't even got Croft uh, or Dearden in there at all. So, you know, take that as you will. But we've seen what happened with Madge and his team. Broncos have been changing their team too with Walters. So, their, their risk is always going to be there for Gamble. But I think he can average around 40 over the next bunch of weeks and play around 13. And you can try and move him along 
uh, moving more, moving along in, in that week there. So that's something interesting to think about. Flegler's someone I want to talk about in this in this video as he he moves into the lock roll and a 363k is is cheap enough. Yeah, I, I always talk about those guys around the 400k mark and they have to score really well to do to do well. And you look at his uh, his minutes and, and his scoring over the first few weeks here. So we got round one for 40, 49 minutes for 41 points. Awesome. Good little work right there. 49 minutes for 33. 33 minutes for 28. Uh, he's got a 34 minutes for 33. 15 and 22. 19 and 27. 23 and 34. 21 and 29. And then on the weekend, 56 in his 44. So obviously a lot more attacking stats with six tackle breaks and three offloads. In the lock position, what can we expect him to play? He started in lock a couple of times and got 34 minutes and 30 minutes, which is not great. 28 minutes is in there. Then we have 47 minutes and 35 and, and, th and 43 minutes for not so great scores either. So he's someone that's uh, interesting to look at because he hasn't had a lot of good scores. We had a little period in the middle of last year where we had a 55, 28, 52, 39, 27, 40, and a 54 in there somewhere uh, in the year before. You know, the start of the start of last year, also a few decent scores, 47 and 70. So if you, if you can get 50-odd minutes out of him, I think he's going to be a good option. That 360K is a little bit of a worry, though. He's actually owned by no one in the top 5,000 and 0.6 overall. So um, someone that's a slight option with with Carrigan going down with his ACL injury, just just think, just think have a little think about him. Um, I wouldn't say he's a must-buy or anything like that, but he's definitely an option. I just noticed with with carrying out Turpin gets the arm the 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 C armband as captaincy and you watch him play eighty minutes from here on in <laughs> now that I've traded him out so that's that there and and then you know I suppose with the Carrigan injury that makes Tavita Pangai's position a lot safer in this team and you imagine Payne Haas has to do a fair bit uh, more effort as well and through the middle and and both those guys are going to score really well going forward uh, we move on to the Dogs Raiders and. And in terms of the dog, Flanagan's actually been dropped and, and Wakeham comes back into the team. Avrilo moves to seven, so it'll be interesting to see what type of role they both play. Wakeham's a little bit more of a running half, similar to Av Avrilo. So, you know, with how they're going, I suppose they're just doing anything to change it up. So I imagine they'll split the kicking role again. Um, yeah, similar to what he's doing with Flanagan anyway. So I, don't, I doubt that changes too much for Avrilo. It'll be interesting to see who kicks goals. Have they got... Who's their kicker in this team with Flanagan out? Might be interesting if that's Avril. I'm not exactly sure. Well, um, I'll get someone in the comments to to let me know who who kicks for the dogs this week. Do we think? Um, but other than that, you know, Atoni gets a starting job. A few people have been talking about him. Yeah, he's half an option, but I think he's too expensive. Corey Allen is out this week as well. He obviously played limited minutes last week, so that's that one there. On the Raiders side, Starling keeps his starting job, even though Hodgson is in the 14 jersey, which is good for him. Um, but I think. Yeah, people are wanting to pick Starling up. I just think he's not going to get enough minutes. Even if he gets 50-30 if they split it, I don't think it's enough. And and this back line is a bit of a shambles at the moment for Raiders. Uh, you obviously got White and Williams there, but Aikens, Simonson, Chris, Scott, and uh, Semi Valame, which is uh, not what we expect from the, from the Raiders guys. Hudson Young comes back into the 13 role with Tarpany out with an MCL injury. So if you held on to Hudson Young, good result. Um, but maybe that means Corey Horsbury gets some extra minutes. Not sure, especially if uh, Hodgson's coming on for Starling. That just leaves three forwards on the bench, and, and you know they can rotate through that. So it'll be interesting to watch how what happens to them in their bench this week. Uh, moving on to <coughs> our Sharks and our Rabbitohs. And this one here, uh, Will Kennedy, after his bad game, I think he's a, he's definitely a sell now. They don't play round 13, so he's a decent one to get rid of. Johnson and Townsend, again, you're following Johnson, but... Really, in this team right now, there's no one of no one of real interest. I think Teague, Wil Teague Wilton, you can probably move on, as you've made a fair bit of cash on him. On the bunny side, we have Gags back in the centers, which is good. Nothing too much. Nothing too much has changed there. Burns keeps his spot. Liam Knight's in the 13 role. Colin Matungi with his lower score last week. You would imagine he bounces back a little bit, but he has been that up and down, sort of a couple of 60s and a bunch of 30s in there. So that's that. Cooks are definitely a hold. Keep keep hold of him. Yeah, Aaron moves back to the interchange, so if anyone that picked him up, you're very, very, very much worried on that front. Uh, we move to the to the Roosters and Cowboys, and Teddy's been a hot topic this week, and I still think he's a hold. We're playing against the Cowboys. Yes, the Cowboys have been playing okay, but they haven't been playing amazing sides, obviously. Um, you know, Raiders, Dogs, these types of, these types of teams there. Um, I think you've got to hold Teddy up. You know, you're going to absolutely lose your mind if he picks up 100 somewhere here, and he's every chance of doing that. 
Uh, Lockie Lamb moves back into the six jersey. Joey Manu, people have been asking about. I think you just keep holding. There's too many issues in, in teams to, to be making marginal upgrades like a, like a Manu, for example. Uh, Sammy Walker is has been named, and there's a little bit of worry about his ankle and also his shoulder, so keep an eye out on, on him. Obviously, they're playing the late game on a Saturday, so it probably makes it a little bit hard if you're thinking about trading him out, but I'd, I'd just follow along over the next few days. Um, just be just be aware that we uh, games start on Friday night this week with uh, with Magic Round. They're all obviously played at Brisbane in at Suncorp, uh, so keep that in mind. You don't have to make your trades or anything until Friday during the day, which is good. Uh, on the in the forwards, we have Ben Marshke. I've had a few people ask about him. He's just had a really really big game, and obviously he's going to play some decent minutes. But you got Kieran on there who can come on and and cover as well. So I wouldn't be picking up Marshke if you got him. You could probably play him because he's playing decent minutes. Tupanua comes back which is good. I suggested for most people to hold him. He's going to score well until round 13. You can probably move him on then if, on then if you like, but if not, he's going to keep playing until obviously a corner or something like that comes back. He should have that spot. Angus Crichton, a lot of people are talking about trading him out this week, and everyone's forgetting, I think, that he got 61 and 70 the last, you know, two weeks before last. So, you know, against against the Cowboys, I'd be expecting some decent, uh, decent running at Mitch Dunn, I believe, on the right. Um, Shane Wright on the left. Um... Yeah, so I'd expect Crichton to have a bounce back game. Radley will be sweet to play this week, which is good. Uh, in terms of the Cowboys, Holmes is still scoring decent, but I think he's a step below all the guns. Uh, and then Tao Malolo really is the one. If you're playing head to head, I think he's a great buy. If you're not, I'd be, you know, with three weeks until their buy in round 13, I think you can hold off until round 14. Still pick him up at a decent price. I doubt he's going to score 80 every week and play 71 minutes, but. Uh, that's the thoughts on, on that one there. That's probably about all on, on this side of things. Tommy Gilbert's still in the reserves, for example, with Dejan Arcee. And what about the uh, the work from Mineral.com here? Thanks for the beautiful team list there for the Warriors. Uh, only one to talk about there is Murdoch Priscilla comes back in the starting side. Curran still stays, which is great if you own him. Reese Walsh is sitting on the, in the number 17 jersey too. And I imagine this might change, or he possibly just gets bigger minutes. And you know, wherever he comes on, I'm not exactly sure. But maybe he gets he comes on after 25 or 30 and, and plays 50 minutes there. Something to think about on that one. If you're seeing those uh, the star there next to the Jacob Arthur, who is is uh, Fred Arthur's son, getting his debut, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't think he's an option. Dylan Brown out for a couple of weeks. Anyone with that star uh, have to go through biosecurity measures with with COVID. Just because I think the Eels had a bit of a scare uh, over the weekend or during the week. I'm not exact. Can't remember exactly when it happened, but. Sean Lane moves back to the interchange for Nathan Brown. Ryan Madison's a great option. Papali is a great option this week. All those guys are good. Mitch Moses, Reed marnay has been named, which is good if you uh, if you own him. But I'd be I'd be thinking about him as uh, sorry. I'd be thinking about the ch possible chances of him being out through concussion. But just keep an eye on that. You have Joey Lustig in there who could come in for him if needed. Um, Opacek, yeah, I still think he's pretty close to a keeper. Gutho, just be aware that he may, may play Origin if you're looking to pick him up uh, on the Warriors side. Toe Harris, perfect for head-to-head -head at the moment, I think. You get him in ASAP. If you're playing overall, it's up to you if you want to wait till round 14, where they have a clean slate and you can pick him up for the rest of the year and he doesn't miss a game. So that's that one there. Roger, I'd be holding steady, you know, up and down as, as per usual. Coming up, to the, uh, come up against the Eels, which is going to make it a tough game for him, but you know, he's had some some good games against some weak teams, some good games against, against some better teams, so just keep an eye on that one. Going forward in terms of our Sunday games, so Storm and Dragons, Nico Hines is named at number one again. Where the hell is Pap? He is at number 19, which is a bit annoying. Obviously, that means he's a chance of playing, which is good, but really stressful if you're only sitting there with, uh, with no cover in the wing fullbacks. Thankfully, all the guys that are out this week uh, more forwards or hookers, like most of our bench in, in terms of Simkin and Stefano and those kind of guys. So that might help us out a little bit, but I'm, yeah, I'm a bit worried as, as to whether they actually use him or not. He do, they do play on Sunday afternoon, which is helpful. Obviously gives him a few extra days rest if he was playing on a Friday, for example. Um, Nico, I'm really interested in. I wish that Pap was named at number one and we could see where Nico was going to play. My only thoughts here is that, uh, what do we got? Riley Jax is in the number six jersey, and would Nico get the number six jersey? If he did, you know, for the next few weeks with Munster out, in terms of Munster, if he's out for two weeks and then has Origin too, it might be worth trading him out with a lot of good, um, you know, halves. You're probably missing out on 120, 140 points over that next bunch of weeks, including the two Origins. 
Uh, so he's someone that if he's out this week and you've got a bunch of other outs, then he could be someone that you could potentially trade. Uh, in terms of Nico, if he was to get the next couple of weeks playing, maybe have a week off in round 12 and then have a really good game in 13 and play a bunch of those weeks there, I think he could be a decent option and make some good cash as he's already doing that. Um, but this is a bit worrying. If, if Pap comes back, where does Nico go? Does he go to the bench or whatever? Not exactly sure. Harry Grant's out as well. So if you picked him up, it's a bit annoying. Looks like he's... um. A little tear in the car. I can't remember exactly what it was. Sorry, um, should tell me down here actually. Uh, Harry Grant hamstring, which is not good. The hamstring one seemed to linger a little bit, so hopefully it's only a couple of weeks. But again, if you just picked him up a couple of weeks and then and then Origin as well, it's annoying. Kenny Bromwich comes into the nine jersey. Fanukin comes into thirteen for Smithy, who is out for one week. I'd be holding on to Smithy if you can, but I know some people will try and trade him. Yeah, Kenny Bromwich in the number nine jersey. So, so we'll see how that goes. I imagine that means. With obviously Chewy Kamikamika in the 12 jersey, there's probably a few extra minutes on the on the bench there, which probably means well she has to play somewhere in the mid 50s, and I wouldn't be expecting them to smash the dragon, so uh, maybe a, a decent game for Welchie, and it could be worth holding, I think, for this week, especially with the, with the bench that they're throwing up. Um, dragons, we got um, who we got? Who's out again? Oh, Ravalawa comes back for Matt uh, Fagai, who got uh, injured last week, looked like syndesmosis, which is not good. Jack Bird's a keeper in the centers, I believe. Get him in there if you want to. Ben Hunt, I'd be worried about Origin, that's all. Um, McCulloch's still good. In the interchange, Farmer Sully comes back onto that interchange. Still playing four forwards on there. Josh Maguire, a decent option, but I'd say someone like TPJ or something is better than Maguire with their price not being too dissimilar at this stage. So uh, last game there with Titans and the Panthers, and the Titans don't change too much. Tanner Boyd still plays. Tino's still in. Fafida has to uh, get his charge downgraded, and I think everyone that owns him will be really hoping he does with all these injuries that we're having at the moment. Um, yeah, fun times. And the Panthers, Cape Wall's out. Martin slots into 12. In terms of the interchange, we don't have any um, Spencer. Oh, wait, where's Spencer? Spencer's on 19. So, yeah, weird that he's been... How the hell has he been dropped? Can anyone understand that? Because I can't. For Jermaine Hopgood. Beautiful. Jesus Christ. Oh, we're having a good time, aren't we? So he might be a trade-out too. And the biggest one I've almost forgot is momorowski has been, uh, he's brought and brought back and he's in the 18 jersey and Burton keeps his spot. So a lot of people worried about it and that's actually unfortunately happened with Burton playing better and better every week. So sad times if you're a mom owner and he plays at the end of the week, which makes everything harder. So he may end up being a trade, unfortunately. Question is, who are these guys plays Origin? You're going to have Cleary there, which means uh, Burton moves to seven. Lua might be there, so they might need a six as well, which means you'll have Mom slot into there. So if you have the opportunity to hold him, it is a bunch of weeks away, but he will he will play at least in round 13, which is, I suppose, the big reason why we hold on to him. But there you go, guys. That's the, uh, that's the team list for this week. Absolute corker of a team list. Exactly what we all wanted for round 10. I loved it. I hope you guys did too. Uh, if you're liking these, please hit like, hit subscribe. Really appreciate all the support so far. And we'll catch you in the next few videos where we try to work out what the hell do we do with all these players. So good luck, guys, this week. We'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.